Welcome to another episode of the AI Show. We're going to talk about music generation with Erica. Tell us what you do, my friend. Hi, uh, my name is Erica. I am a software engineer on the prototyping and innovation team in the Cloud AI platform. Um, as part of a group, we are using deep learning to create these AI solutions. Uh, one of them is music generation, which I would like to talk about today. Awesome. Why don't you walk us through the problem? Uh, sure. So within the field of AI and music, there are a lot of sub-problems. And these are some of them. So we have, you know, we can create, use, use AI to create a melody, which can be a single instrument. It can be monophonic or polyphonic. It can be multiple instruments. It can be generating the accompaniment for a given melody. It can be creating an AI duet or audio style transfer. And there are a lot of tasks. So this is a lot of stuff to make music exactly. from AI. Exactly. Cool. But what we will be focusing on is the single instrument, the monophonic uh, melody generation. So I know some music. Okay, right? great. And so I understand how music works, and I understand how machine learning works. The, the, there's a couple of questions I have. Number one, I'm only familiar with classification, so you'll have to explain how we generate a sequence of things, number one. And number two, how do you get from actual music into the mathematical vectors that the machine learning is going to understand? Okay, got it. So one is you want to understand how this is a classification problem. Mm -hmm. And second, you want to understand the input representation. Mm -hmm. So when you're building a system like this, the three most important factors are the input representation, the model architecture, and the data set. So cool. what data you're using. And overall, the system looks something like this. So we take in MIDI. We convert it to a piano roll, which is the input representation. This goes into a sequence-to-sequence -sequence LSTM based architecture. You get back your piano roll and you convert it back to MIDI, which is your music. Okay. So just a little background. There are a lot of music formats out there. On the left hand of the spectrum, you have WAV, uh, MP3, which are more heavier formats and contain a lot of more raw audio sound. Whereas on the right side, you have more semantic information like MIDI, ABC, and sheet music that okay. don't contain the sound itself. So what we are going to be working with is MIDI, which is semantic music information. Okay. And I know you said you have uh, a lot of music background, but this is a quick one-on-one -on -one for people who may not have that background. Okay. So it's important to understand what a beat is, which is a basic unit of time, a note, which is the actual note that you're playing, and then the tempo, which is the beats per minute or the quarter notes per minute. Okay. And this is what a MIDI file looks like. Um, so it's... Yes, it's a lot of information. You have a header, which is the pattern. Then you have a track. Then you have a lot of these events, which is basically telling you, okay, this is the tempo event. These are a couple of note on and note off events. And this is the end of track event. I see. That so is this, is that this Python, by the way? Or, or what is this? This uh, is Python. Okay. So I'm using a Python library to read the MIDI file. Okay. I'm using Python MIDI. Got it. Um, and so this is uh, our input representation that you wanted to talk about. So this is basically a 2D matrix of the notes versus the time. And each black square there indicates that a note is being pressed at that moment in time. I see. So what you're feeding to the neural network is a set of ones and zeros of column vectors that represent what notes are being played at that moment in time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what we do is we convert this MIDI file into those ones and zeros. And the way we do that is we take information from the MIDI file itself. So here you see we have a resolution of 48 ticks per beat. We have the tempo uh, and it's encoded in 8-bit words, which is 120 beats per minute. We have total ticks of 101. So if you, in MIDI, something that's really important is that ticks are represented in relative time. That is, each tick is relative to the previous tick. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you, you need to add up all these ticks to get the entire number of ticks in the file. So you see 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 100 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1. That's 101. We make an assumption for each of those column vectors, how much time in actual time does it actually represent? And we want to say it's 0 0.02 seconds, uh -huh. which is basically 20 milliseconds. Okay. We then compute the ticks per second, which is the resolution into the tempo. That's 480 into 2 bits, uh, beats per second, which is 960. Okay. You take the ticks per time slice, which is the ticks per second, multiplied by the time per time slice. So that's 19.2. So what that's telling us is that in the MIDI file that has all these ticks, how many ticks map to one column vector in your in piano roll representation? So it's just a lot of math to come up with these column vectors for each 
tick or is it second or tick or what is it for each So, month? MIDI talks in terms of ticks. Mm -hmm. We talk in terms of seconds. Right. So, we want to go from ticks to seconds. I see. And you have to do these three lines of math to go from ticks to seconds. Got it. Got it. Um, cool. And so you compute your piano roll width, which is the total ticks divided by the ticks per time slice, which will be six. So essentially what this is telling me is it's going to give you this 2D matrix, which is your piano roll. The width is six. Each of these column vectors are telling me which notes are on at that given point Got in it. time or not. And so you can do a little bit more math and you can compute which ticks are on and off. Okay. At, the, at those given points in time. So you take the tick and you divide it by the ticks per time slice and you get the index of whether it should be on or not. So you see, if you look at this piano roll, what it's saying is note C5, E5 and G5 are all pressed from the zeroth to the fourth index mm -hmm. where each index represents 19 seconds and it's being held and then at the fifth index, it's being released. Okay. So it's a C chord. Yeah. Does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, it does. Of, Effectively, um, what you're doing is you're taking a MIDI file and you're vectorizing it, but the vectors are column vectors, and each column vector represents a time slice. Exactly. Right. So this is this is a kind of a way to represent it. You take your music file and you create it into these column vectors of zeros and ones. Cool. Now we're going to pass this to the neural network. So, and before that, we're going to talk a little about the data sets. Uh, I am using the scale chords data set, which is an open data set mm -hmm. with uh, scale chords. Uh, it has about 156 songs, and all of these are in MIDI format. Cool. Okay, uh, back to the neural network. So I am using an LSTM sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. We pass in these um, column vectors to the encoder. Uh, this is then, and you train it with the encoder-decoder architecture to basically produce um, column vectors, which are the nodes predicted. So in from a classification perspective, the way to think of it is that the decoder is predicting at each time step what notes should be on or off. Okay. So it's a multi-label classification problem. I see. So let's see. Let me back up because I'm, I'm used to like deep learning in the terms of like regular multi-layer perceptron type things with activation functions and, and convolutional neural networks. So LSTMs are a little bit different. How are they different? Right, so in, in, within the deep learning space, there are a lot of models. Convolutional neural networks are one. Uh, similar to CNNs, there are the RNNs, which mm -hmm. is the recurrent neural networks. And the LSTM is a specialized RNN. So the, RN, the advantage of using an RNN is it has context from layers uh, from the past. And it is able to capture this context going forward. But it has, but neural networks suffer from memory loss, mm -hmm. so it cannot remember the context from way back. Whereas LSTM has certain multiplicative gates that allow it to capture or to retain more memory. I see, I see. That is the reason why we decide to use an LSTM. So effectively, it's just a different architecture of a deep learning model. And the way you train it is you pass in that big matrix. And then the way you optimize it, you probably use some kind of back prop that tries to make the output map to what the input was. Right. Okay. So this is the input, and this is the output, and the back prop flows through this Got it. to learn that output. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. So once you, once you optimize all of the weights, then how do you actually use this network to generate music? Right. And then when I want to generate music, I pass in these vectors, but now it doesn't know these vectors, so it's predicting those vectors. Oh, I see. I and see. That's the music. That's awesome. And so, just to recap, you pass these vectors in, and while you're optimizing, it's just checking to see if it's going to get the right things out, because effectively you're trying to find some way to encode what you already have. And then you give it some other things, and then you let it think what it's going to actually output. Exactly. Oh, fantastic. So what does the music, what does the music sound like? Because I'm interested in, in hearing what the original music sounds like versus what the new music sound like, sounds like. Okay, I can show that to you. So uh, I, had, I have it open here. Okay. Um, That's funny. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so I can explain that. So this is a very simple model mm -hmm. and it's taking very simple music. So what it's trained on is it's taking scale chords. So think of different scale uh -huh. chords in you know, all the notes, but also different kinds of scale chords. So you have pentatonic, major, minor, mm -hmm. harmonic, all the scales and so these are it's very simple and this is a very simple model so it's been trained just for 10 epochs and mm -hmm. the 
the reason of showing this model or even through the blog post is to show how anyone can create their own and you know create a more sophisticated model use a better data set to create you know better sounding music i see so you're saying that if we want this to be even better right we would give it more more diverse music because the scales is just do 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 and yeah that's exactly. not going to really do very much it's not learning anything effectively right uh, and then you it's learning very little and right. you train it longer and then it'll do a little bit better yes so he, here's the question and and the, these are these might be dumb questions but you oh, tell me yeah. so when you are training the model like how much data are you giving it as far as time, like what's the time window you give it to train it, right? Because I'm not familiar with LSTMs, but I'm assuming that for every time window, there's going to be some kind of node in the LSTM that then gets mapped to the output. Right. So with LSTMs and RNNs, you have a context window. So the input length is 200. Okay. So what that means is you have 200 column vectors. Mm -hmm. And depending on how narrowly you've sliced your MIDI file, so how many MIDI ticks go into each of those column vectors, um, that's up to the user, and right. but but I'm using 200. So essentially, what I do is I'm taking two seconds of input and trying to produce the next two seconds. I see. And when you're training it, you're you're putting two seconds in and using the optimization to actually map to the output to the same ones that are in the input. Oh no, I'm taking in the input two seconds and then I'm mapping it to the next two seconds oh, that I just, follow of the. Of course, yeah, smart. Yeah. That, uh, of course. And so when you're when you're giving it notes to generate music, you have to prime the pump, so to speak, right? Exactly, exactly. And so uh, we use something called a primer, and the primer is basically some kind of seed music that you feed into the encoder and then let the decoder generate whatever it has learned from the weights that it has learned. Awesome. Well, this has been super informative. In the next uh, section of this episode, we're going to actually look at some of the code to see how that works. And so I guess we'll wait until then. Awesome. We'll see you next time. Take care.